Hi guys, it's Cynthia and I'm here today with something a little bit different. It's almost a mystery unboxing because I grabbed a lot of stuff at an estate sale today without really taking a good look at it because it just was kind of one of those loads that I thought, you know what, I'm just going to grab what looks good and keep on going because it was a small place and I needed to get moving. But as you can see from this top item, pretty much we're talking about fabric. Some of it is fabric. Um, the person was a quilter, so some of it is raw fabrics, but she was also either a collector of vintage embroidery or she did a lot of vintage embroidery because there's a lot of that in here as well. So we're going to take a look together at everything I got. And um, yeah, let's see. Uh, so I will preface this also by saying one of the reasons I went out to the sale, which was quite a hike, was um, because in the past I bought a set of cut and sew uh, panels, fabric panels. You might remember these from old sewing classes, the really simple shapes you cut out and then you sew them together and you make stuffed animals. And we've done really, really well with those. So I thought I saw some of those in the stacks and stacks of fabric that was pictured. Um, I didn't find very much. The girl said she thought there was a big stack. So either somebody beat me to it or we just have a different interpretation of what a big stack of cut and sew fabrics are. I did get a few, not exactly what I was looking for, but um, like I said, I think I supplemented it with some really fun items, starting with this. So this again is clearly a vintage, gosh, I don't know what you would call this piece of fabric, like a, uh, oh, excuse me, a placemat or I mean, kind of a scarf, a decorative, it kind of reminds me of like the decorative tea towels. Um, it's that sort of material and it's got all these little Swedish children on it. Uh, very cute piece. Um, and it's, you know, it's all hemmed like a little placemat. I guess it was like, you know what it is? I, I, I guess it was like a, a tabletop, like placemat um, for a decorative uh, table. And if I spend that much time talking about everything, we will never get through. So this, I think, I think I got um, the whole set or pretty close to the whole set of these. So this is a piece of vintage cloth. It's been embroidered um, and this one says Thursday shop. Now I know I do have in here some other ones that say the other days of the week. So at one point there was all seven days of the week with your housewife activity um, sewn in. This one wasn't quite finished. You can see there's still some embroidery that isn't done. So she was working her way through the colors and then whatever these last colors were didn't get finished. Um, I didn't do a lot of research but I do know that there is a market for old embroidered cloths. Modern crafters use them. Um, either they just like to collect the vintage look or they use them again to do make new crafts which would be so amazing if somebody could recycle these into a quilt or something that would be amazing. So there's Thursday. Let's see if we can find the other days. I'm going to actually put this aside. All right. That I'm going to also put aside. Um, this. Okay. So this is a similar idea. Look at this. So days. Isn't that fun? Now this appears to be embroidered, but it's not. This is what I believe is called stamped. And I think it was designed to embroider over. Um, or it's just a stamped tea towel. Definitely vintage. It does have some little, you know, rust stain issues. Oh, it's actually got quite a few issues now that I get deeper. But I think anybody buying vintage fabric, um, you know, knows how to deal with that. So this is actually quite a big piece of fabric that the more I open it, there's quite a few stains in there. But it's a large piece. So I'm not sure what it was designed for. A tablecloth, I'm guessing, so that you would, um, when you were doing your sewing or ironing you lay this tablecloth out yeah again um you might be put off by these vintage stains and things but th but people who really want these know how to deal with it and it's not a problem also in this pile since i'm there i picked up some vintage baby clothes now in the past i would have avoided these but i bought some recently because i thought i was buying doll clothes and realized that some of these do fit baby dolls and now, um, I, I like them. I like them a lot. So this is gorgeous. This is a little girl's dress in kind of a flannel fabric with a little plastic button there. And one of the giveaways, you know, that it's vintage is that it snaps in the back. We don't really do snaps so much anymore. 
um, I don't know if this one might have been handmade. This one doesn't seem to have a tag. Some of them do have a tag. So I picked up, so what I'm going to do is lot these together. Um, I said I recently sold a lot for in the $25 range, and these are even nicer conditioned, probably because they're a little bit newer. I would say 60s and 70s, this especially. Look at this. This is so 70s to me. So this looks handmade. It is a little velvet, like, jacket across the, that the buttons across here. Look at these tiny, tiny little buttons. So cute. This looks like something I would have worn. There's pictures of me wearing little velvet dresses like this when I was a baby. So 60s, early 60s. Um, it, although, like I said, this kind of looks 70s to me. And again, I, I think it's been handmade. But it looks like it's never been worn. So I don't know. One other thing. She also had some patterns, vintage patterns for vintage baby clothes. So it's possible that she created new, which this almost feels like it has to be, created these recently from vintage patterns. So they may not actually be as old as they look. Having said that, some of them do have tags that they are. This one, again, so cute. Little vintage baby top. The buttons are missing. So somebody salvaged the buttons. Oh, snaps. Again, they had snaps. No, it had buttons. And it's got a little pattern of like a little giraffe and things. Is that adorable? Like a little smock. And um, here's a couple more pieces. Let's do the, all the rest of the clothes while we're in here. Like I said, I just grabbed, I didn't even look hard, um, a little woolen beret. And another hand knitted this one's cute look it's got a little visor <laughs> and then I think this is one of the dresses that had a tag so so cute again I would have totally worn something like this when I was little here's the tag on this one baby togs um, it does say it's from the Philippines so maybe it's a it's a newer outfit that's just designed again retro because it's from the Philippines I don't know but awfully cute and sadly, this one's got a stain at the bottom. But again, look at this. Look at the smocking and the vintage embroidery. Adorable. And this one is from Party Look Originals. Party Look Originals. Um, again, to me, that looks like a pretty vintage thing. Very tiny buttons in the back. Um, again, sadly for the stain. This, this I may try washing because I think that this will be okay in the washing machine. So that, kids clothes. Let's go back to the fabrics. I don't know what this is. Oh, here we go. Oh, okay. So this, forgive me if this upsets anybody. I thought it was just a beautiful piece of old Americana. Look at this. Um, so this definitely would have been 50s, 60s. I don't think it would have been any later than 60s. Um, kitsch uh, look on, again, a tablecloth piece. How wild is that? Lovely art. Lovely, lovely art. Um, so this is one of the things that is kind of a fabric panel, but this is so what they call a quilt top. And these actually didn't sell as well as the fabric panels, but you know, considering I probably paid less than a dollar, I paid 20 bucks for everything that you're gonna see me show you. Um, so this is um, a quilt top. It's basically designed to just attach this with some batting in between to a backing fabric and you've got a baby quilt. Very cute. Teddy bear. Um, some of these have dates on them, but again, I would guess this one is 80s, probably, from the feel of the fabric. Um, this I grabbed. I wish it was a bigger piece, but it's very cute. Uh, 1996 Tasmanian Devil patchwork um, flannel fabric. Thinking somebody will want that. Taz is very popular. Put him in a quilt or something. I'm going to save that because that goes with something else. Oh, look, here's another baby dress. This one is Nanette. And another smocked dress. Very, very popular from the late 50s, early 60s. Let's see if there's anything else that tells me. Nope, just Nanette. Um, these, I'm going to hang on to for one second. And go... No, I think this is the whole lot of them. So, this, look at this. This is, 
a tablecloth again or yep I think we're talking tablecloth here I'm not gonna open it all the way but all hand embroidered is that beautiful see the flower stitching and then this crocheted edge gorgeous gorgeous look there's another one of them and it goes all around the panels I have no idea what this is worth, but somebody's going to want this. This this is was a lot of time and effort someone put into embroidering this. It's going to remind somebody of when they were a kid, grandma's house, having things like this. Gorgeous. That was the kind of thing that really pulled me in. This one. Oh, look at this. Oh, my gosh. Look, it's now, again, I, like I said, I haven't seen all these things. So this is the Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep prayer. Um, oh, it's coming apart a little bit. Oh, she hadn't finished it, it looks like. It looks like she was in the middle of doing the red lettering. But everything else is done. Again, detail. Look at the stitching detail on this. So cute. This, to me, it says Child Sampler Color Text Process. Um, I would guess 60s on this, too. Uh, you know, it, I don't know if we were doing these in the 50s. But definitely early 60s so pretty here's another one samplers oh this was give us this day our daily bread um this is the kind of thing you know people when before we had a lot of tv or <laughs> big tv watchers this would all be hand embroidered and then you know framed and hung up in the kitchen or the living room beautiful sampler piece um, used it they would have used it for their young girls to teach them how to sew linen sampler by color text I have to look up the color text brand and see um, so this one so this is kind of like the other one this is a table runner so again it's just a long thin it's designed to go over like hang over the edge of a long like a hall table um, again, embroidered with the flowers, pink and blue. She was really into that. And um, the bonnet girls on that. And then some little tiny flowers and lace crochet. I'm just, I'm blown away by how lovely these pieces are. And I'm thinking she had to be a collector. I don't think that she sewed all these herself. But maybe, maybe. So now we have a couple of unfinished or unstarted even um, embroider, color text embroidery for... Uh, tablecloths. This one, use star thread. I keep looking to see. Oh, this one says it's a scarf. Interesting. So it's a printed pattern, and this is designed for a scarf. Um, you would finish the edges probably with, with some kind of nice ribbon or something, and then look, it was 39 cents, which will date it for you somewhat. That one could be 50s. Uh, and then here's another pure linen made also in other size and see lesson chart so another sampler that you would use to help teach somebody teach your children your daughters like back then how to embroider and you would just follow the pattern this is a very nice piece of fabric it feels really good and this one is just a square that then you would use either like as what do they used to call them antimacassar that went over the back of your couch or you could turn it into a pillow uh, this is another of the same one so I would say probably pillows this one so this is the same one and she had started it and she was doing it in a like a cruel this is actually looks like almost cruel work or just really tight embroidery um, she was doing it in an off-white color but you really could have done it in you know any color oh here's a tag on this one this is the same let's see what this says my no the Dayton I don't know. You read it better than I can. This thing, camera doesn't focus. The Dayton Company. Oh, M. Dayton Company. That's like um, Dayton's, uh, I think it's a big department store in uh, Chicago. I don't know if we ever had them out here. Um, and this was a dollar, which is kind of pricey considering, um, I don't know if that would be the date. If it is, it's 10, 15, 58. If this was from the 50s, it could be. Could very well be. But a dollar, unless she got several for these. I thought a dollar's kind of pricey for that. Um, this just got in here because, you know, 
it was in here. It's again another uh, sampler piece for a child to work on. Um, probably designed to sew or applique and then cut out maybe the block because of the way it is. Yeah, I'm not quite sure on that one. I'll see if we have any more pieces of that. So this is one of the real prizes. This is a full tablecloth and let me come around this way so you can see. Again, fully hand embroidered. And if you look at this one, this kind of give you an idea of why they call these things sampler patterns because see how there's different stitch like these are X's and then these are like leaf stitches and then this is like a loop stitch. So you learned all your different stitches by creating different types of flowers on this. And this whole thing is embroidered. Look at that. Look at that. Lovely colors. Again, the woman who did these, if these were all done by her, you know, she had good color choices or maybe the color choices were dictated like, you know, now when you get a pattern and it tells you what colors you should use. But um, these, these soft, these blues and purples. And this is in pretty darn good shape. Um, again, there's probably some staining somewhere because you just can't not do that on these older fabrics. Um, Cause they just, from just sitting, they get, you know, marks on them. But this one's looking really clean to the point where, like I said, it might be a recreation. I don't know how you can tell the difference these days between a recreation and not. Let me just grab a bunch more. Again, not really sure what's in here or what I'm grabbing. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna pull these out. These are different. And uh, so the where we were, the box, the fabrics were all piled in one place. So you'll, as I'm going through, you'll see, you could tell the order I picked things up in. And then there was a second table full of um, quilt. Uh, the woman next to me bought the most amazing started quilt. It was gorgeous, and I'm kind of glad she grabbed it because I don't think I could have afforded to add it to my pile, but it was because it was amazing. Okay, this pile's kind of high, so let me move a few of these out of the way. We'll get to those in a little bit. Get the pen out of the way so I don't get ink on anything. So this one, let's see what we got here. So this, okay, that tablecloth we were just looking at, this looks like a tablecloth. 54 by 54, pure linen, wild roses. She paid $6 for it. I'm gonna take that pin out though because pins and old fabric do not do well together. So this would be like that other one, but it hasn't been started yet. And um, <clears throat> it's nice, it's all pre-hemmed. So all you'd have to do is embroider and then put it on your table, which is kind of scary, you know, that you would put this on your table um, and eat on this <laughs> wild roses design let's take a look here hang on let me see here wild roses design what will we call this i'm going to look it up on my phone you bear with me wild roses design probably isn't going to get me there table cloth uh, of course i spelled it wrong because this is how i am What would you call this? Shout it out to me. So if it's a embroidery tablecloth, let's look at antique. Hmm. No, that didn't work for me. All right, I was hoping I was gonna get a quick look, but the trouble is a lot of what I'm seeing is already finished, which is fine too. Um, so there has to be a word for it when it's not finished. Um, very popular in the United Kingdom. I don't know why I'm getting a lot of, I'm getting nothing but United Kingdom. That's weird. Why is my phone doing that? I find it impossible to believe that no one in America is buying embroidered. Let's try embroidered. Salt. So I don't know if you'll be able to see. So here's some hand embroidered Christmas tablecloth. That went for $30. Um, vintage Swedish handmade textile. The Swedish linens. I have some other Swedish linens. I swear it knows me. 
Let's see, hand embroidered linen card that card table size that didn't go for much. Oh, card tables. That's what some of these smaller ones are for. Card tables are all the rage. So this would probably be more like it. So a little applique tablecloth. That one went for 33, 16. Um, but how would we say that went for 20? Just the fabric. Embroidered tablecloth fabric. Mm, not getting there. So I'm going to have to look that up. If you know off the top of your head, if you're a fabric person and know what is the keyword that I would look up to get just this, the unfinished version, um, let me know. And then this is a sort of matching, I think this is probably was expected to be a napkin, a matching version of that or a smaller table for a side table. Um, oh, look, we got another little kid's dress snuck in here. What is this one? Uh, oh yeah, this is one of these. These are very popular um, in the 50s. So a little velvet, adorable little velvet dress. And then it was supposed to have a button there so it would button at the top. So it was real easy to put on a baby because it was completely open. And it is from the Philippines again though. Can't read what that says. So again, I, for the fact that they're from the Philippines makes me feel like they're not that old, but I could be completely off about that. Still awfully cute. All right, here's a set that I see that kind of goes together. Let's see what we got. So this is a tea towel that has um, printed. So this is printed and then it had the embroidery section um, of a little Scotty dog with a fork, I guess. He's getting ready to eat. And I think I've got a matching. Yeah, let's see, here's some matching ones. Oh, now see, this is more of that, but it doesn't match the one I had before. So, so on Wednesday, so this is another one of these towel for each day. And um, the embroidery on this isn't quite as fine now if it's the fabric or again, it was a different person who did it, but those go together. And, oh, here's another puppy one. So this one goes with the puppy one. Oh my gosh, look at this. The little puppies are wearing aprons and they've got a big giant drink glass. Oh, so they're helping clean up in the kitchen. The other one had a fork and this one's got the glasses and they're helping clean up. Oh, that is so cute. So those two, I mean, come on, somebody has to want. That has got to be worth something. And then here's a little Scotty dog hanging out by the lamppost. I'm not sure why. <laughs> <laughs> but it's from the same line. Again, adorable. And then this, so you saw the one that said sew so on Wednesday, iron on Tuesday. Oh, so it probably says wash on Monday, iron on Tuesday, sew so on Wednesday, and then, I don't know, hopefully one of these days she gets to rest. Um, nice. Um, this actually reminds me of some old Polish art. It might be Swedish, as I said. I saw a lot of Swedish stuff in here. Um, and see, speaking of, so wait, this this is one of the Swedish ones so cute. So this is another little table runner. And then look at this. I might have to keep this. Like I said, my, my husband's family is Swedish and I could bring this for smorgasbord. So very cute. So very cute. The little trolls, the Swedish trolls and hanging out. And I've seen pictures of my mother-in-law's Swedish Christmases and it all looked very much like this. So I think this I think we might run this through the wash and carefully and um, bring this for smorgasbord. No tags whatsoever. Put that over there. Um, oh, here's another one of these. So we saw this is, looks like a companion piece to the one we looked at before with the girls, the embroidered girls. This looks like it's a little different, slightly different pattern. This I thought was so fun. Um, I don't think this will fit on my table, but I almost want to try. So this is a big London, England map tablecloth. So let me see if I can get you some of it. I think it's London. Or wait, maybe it's Paris. Um, no, I think it's London. Southampton, Regent Sioux. Yeah, that's London. So the center of it is uh, a big map. Look, Madame Tussauds. Oh my God, I want to keep this. Paddington Station, Bayswater Road. And then around the bottom is like... You know, people going to the tube. Here's the list of stops. Oh, here we go, all the stops. So the bottom is sort of the train station and the people going along the road. Um, 
piece. And then the center. Oh, here we go. Oh my God. Oh my God. The more I see this, the more I want to keep this. I have, it, this won't fit on my table, but I want to do something with it. Look, New Scotland Yard, the Imperial Museum. Where's the Trafalgar? Come on, Buckingham Palace. Oh, there we go. Buckingham Palace. Oh, you are here. So it was like, it was sold. It was like a palace souvenir. Westbury, oh, Westbury Hotel, you are here. So this is what this came from. It was people when they stayed at the Westbury Hotel right behind Buckingham Palace near the American Embassy. Is that, oh, this is so cute. Well, I'm gonna have to look this one up. If it's worth a ton of money, I'll probably sell it, but I might keep it and enjoy it for a while. I want to put it on my table, but it's a big square. My table is a is a um, round. It's round, but it's quite large. It would fit a a, um, a more than a card table. Um, but oh my god, yeah, it was actually probably designed for a card table. Very cute, very cute. All right, let me bring over this pile. Oh my god, he's still with me. Are you a fabric fan? All right, so this is kind of what I went to go for. So I saw in the pictures, I saw like things like this sticking out from piles, piles, piles of fabric. So I recognize these as cut and sews. Um, they weren't, like I said, the kind that I really wanted, but I think that these will still be okay. So this is a, this makes a vest um, and maybe an apron. No, maybe it's all a vest. So this is what you get when you're done and then the pieces, see how you just cut them out and then sew it together. And you have a very, in this case, I feel like 80s cute country vest. I think I had a vest one before that I sold. I don't know what this one, like I, I didn't even look at these, I just grabbed them because I saw the print and went, yeah. Friends, flowers are, are something. I don't know what they are. Fresh flowers. Flowers are our constant friends. Fresh flowers. So this looks to me like either a quilt or a pillow because in the center are like two big squares. So it was probably designed. Here we go. Susan Winget, 1994. Uh, 1994. That's all I know about it. So not well that's still vintage and then this one is the kind of ABC grandma's house oh a teacher is special oh my god look it's a giant teacher quilt how adorable is that this is 1995 Welcome students back to school with Susan's Cheerful School Days door wall hanging. Okay, so you could back this and turn it into a big wall hanging. A teacher is a special friend whose love and kindness never end. Adorable. So um, that, I think somebody will want to make that for a teacher. I know. Cute. Oh, the sirens in the background. We have a lot of those today. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, oh, there's two of those. I always like when there's more than one because that makes it even easier to list. Oh, this is definitely a cut and sew. Here we go. This is Raggedy Patch Kids. Here's the picture. All right, so I got more cut and sews than I thought I did. So Raggedy Patch Kids doll, cut and sew doll. I'm thinking, yep, yeah, there's her body. So it looks like it makes the big doll with the small doll. So like, cause here's the small doll. So see what I mean by cutting? So you just, you cut the front out, you cut the back out, you back to back them, stuff them, sew them, you know, sew them, stuff them. Yeah, cute. I've never had that one before. That one's fun. Uh, this is another vest, springtime vest. The piles get bigger here. I think this was the first one I grabbed cause I love the colors. I don't know what it is cute what do we think it is mittens kept here oh this looks like another vest which i'm not thrilled about but yep that is another cute vest from alma lynn 
Designs. Lola Designs, 1996. Sweet colors. Oh my god, I'm getting there. Oh. So these, a few more items. at the end um, so this was kind of a just a grab at the, at the last minute because I figured it wasn't really gonna add any price to it um, so these are little I think they're like called drink mats they're kind of like before you had coasters you just put these down on the table good eating Josiah you could put them under a little plate little Christiana Campbello Tavern Raleigh Tavern. That's another Raleigh Tavern. Josiah Chowning. So I don't see any. There's no um, tag. So I'll just look these up in the center and see what those are. But again, somebody who does has a real vintage home would probably enjoy having those on their table. There's also a set of these. I dropped one on the floor, so I do have more. Um, these are also weird little. That one's, they're actually cut out. Um, little napkins or drink you know again to put your drinks on because they're too rough for napkins really but like to put your drinks on handmade a nice cool little piece of fabric some crafter might want to use for something um, this just ended up in here I don't know why but it did it's just a lovely piece of fabric with flowers on it um, again for a quilt or some small pillows uh, here's one more of these so we already talked about. Oh, here's another one of those. There must be two sets. And then these, although they look like fabric, are actually clothes. Um, there were very few clothes at this place, but there was two Hawaiian items that I wanted to pick up. So I won't be able to show you on the camera this way. Um, these are sarongs. And we'll show you the tag on them, though, because that's why I grabbed them. I can find it. Here we go. So these are Hilo Hatties from Hawaii. Um, Hilo Hatties, as you may know, is a very popular chain of Hawaiian clothing and other type items, housewares and things. And the stores are all over the place. I think they obviously started out in Hawaii, but there you can find them in the States. Um, and then so this one and this one are both sarongs. This one is more of a polyester. This one feels like more of a cotton. And um, they're just, if you know what I mean, like a sarong, it goes over your bathing suit. So it has a, it's a wrap. See, it has like a tie. And so you can just, you can either wrap it around your waist or you can wrap it around your chest um, to cover yourself fully when you're wearing a bathing suit or like around your waist if you just have the top of your bathing suit showing. Um, so that's a Hilo Hattie sarong. And this one, it's a very nice one. This one feels older because of the material. Now it's interesting, the tag's a little different. Sorry, let me show you. Hilo Hattie, made in the USA. Yeah, this one's cotton. So very nice. And just about done. I'm gonna get two things. And I grabbed this, I'm not sure why, because it was part of the deal. It was a skirt, uh, cute print. Um, looks like it's never been worn. Still has the tags from the price. And it's Elements, G Elements. So the last thing I wanna show you um, is my favorite thing that has nothing to do with any of that. It's these, these are printer blocks. They're made, they're kind of like rubber stamps, but they're made out of like a metal um, on wood. I don't know what this is. It's hard to tell what this one is. Um, usually they were used for advertisements. This one, we can tell what it is. This is a poster for Andy Hardy Comes Home, Mickey Rooney movie. And then this would have been used in a newspaper, you know, set into the block to put a, the poster in the corner to advertise the movie. Depending what movie you find, these can be worth hundreds of dollars. I saw one for Bullet go recently for $100. I've seen some of the other ones like Wizard of Oz and things go for hundreds of dollars. This one should go in the 30 range. And I don't know, I have to do some research on this one. Um, it is a printer's block, maybe for a restaurant or just a general, you know, fill in the details of some kind of restaurant there. So that's what I got. Tell me what you liked best, and if you want any of these things, I will have them listed on eBay soon, or send me a message, and we will make a deal. Hope you guys have some great pop culture profits of your own. I'll see you later.